Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. Slamfire Radio, episode 518, recording live on Wednesday, August 2nd. I'm one of your hosts, Bo. I'm one of your hosts, Adriel. And that is all for now. For now. Maybe later. Maybe Maybe later later we'll get some more people. Okay. They got caught on the 401 and the uh, 302 and the 404 not found highway and You you know where the 401 is? I have no. All I know, I just know about it because it's the center of the universe and it's got a highway. It's near there. Toronto. That's what yeah, you, yeah, it's in Toronto, I think, because it's in Ontario. <laughs> and it goes all the way to Montreal. Oh, close to it anyways. Somewhere else that's in Ontario. Can't um, imagine where. Do you want to get started? Do you want me to start? Uh, yeah, I could start. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, why not? Um, I match directed a three-gun match at Sherwood Park. That was my Saturday. Um, went well. I like those small matches. They're so quick. You just have like one big squad, reset a bunch, run through some stages. I designed them so that they would be like super easy to tear down and rebuild because we just use one bay. Yeah. So like the a lot of the props, a lot of the walls just either stayed where they were or just move a little bit and then we're ready to go again. How many so stages? We ran four stages. Four stages. Okay. That's a lot for three gun in, in one bay uh, because keep in mind you're... It's not the stage build so much. It's the stage shoot and reset time. Because every time you shoot, you need to prep three guns, shoot three guns, show safe on three guns, and then take them all back, right? So, Is it a dumb question to ask if the three guns are used in every no, three-gun stage? No, it's not a dumb question. And um, I tried to make it so that you'd have to uh, just yeah. through stage design. Um, because it's called three gun and not two gun or whatever, but uh, yeah. there's, a couple, there's there's usually a stage or two that you can uh, opt not to use a gun, but not not in any of these designs. You had to use okay. all three. Okay. Yeah. You, I can't say that there was a there was one stage where someone shot it without using their rifle, and there were there were a couple of stages where it was like eh, if you wanted to, you could run do this and then do that, and then you don't have to use all three guns. So, but yeah, usually usually we try to use as many as possible because that's the whole the whole name of the game. And it's fun to use everything you okay. got. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Match went well. Bren shot very well. It's uh, surprisingly light ac- uh, recoiling. And it didn't kick the shells like, oh, yeah. I brought an unsighted in rifle to a three gun match. Good job, yeah. me, right? Yeah. And it worked out. I put like a, new, a brand new optic that was on a mount, put it on the rifle. <laughs> I fired five rounds and I was like, yeah, that looks close. <laughs> and uh it was it was close enough so good yeah that's uh i wouldn't recommend that for anyone it's probably a bad idea no, no. <laughs> not for a novice that's for sure yeah um no the the gun ran really well i liked the uh it was um seating a full mag so taking a mag that's right full and jamming it in on a closed bolt was a little bit tough uh doable but t- but tough you had to like manhandle it right and a couple times i didn't and then the mag wasn't like fully seated but uh Meh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't train wreck any stages, and uh, that is that. Is that a me. is that a break in thing? Is that an adjustment thing? No, that's a. Uh, our magazines are made for ten, and if you put ten in there, there's not really a lot of breathing room because if you put too much breathing room, well, now it fits eleven. So, you it. get at best, at absolute best, it's a ten and a half capacity in these magazines, and if it's like ten point two, they you're going to have a hard. Uh, jam into the into the gun while the the, bull, okay. it, it, the americans do a 30 round mag they just run 29 in it yeah got it it's fine right but us like we kind of need every round yeah yeah <laughs> if you're running like uh just in key like these are lar mags here so you can run 10 10 there 10 there and mm-hmm. just flip them between each other just for the viewers who aren't familiar with the legalese there <laughs> pretty much every three gun match video i put up people are accusing me of breaking the law so it's uh i get tired of <laughs> restating uh... how i'm not 
um or most recently i got message on facebook some guy was like you can't buy anti-tank rifles in canada and you never had since the 90s i'm like mm, my the ptrs's that i shot uh say otherwise <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, an anti-tank rifle at, only <laughs> um yeah so a couple things i found so the, the brand ran, ran great the it's got a very light trigger three pounds very like very fast very easy to shoot that thing fast so uh that was great um everything was great about it ran ran great for me it's uh it's hard to uh it's hard to not look at that and say like oh i maybe i should just sell some guns and, and just buy one of those but uh they're very expensive and that's not really my style so you know whatever uh the covenant scope the 200 dollar uh nice, scope. Nice. couple things i like about it a couple things i don't want to i like the price the price is i was just good. gonna say that's gonna mm -hmm. be it's number one uh feature right <laughs> yeah yeah it's a number one feature by far um the uh it's got like a this lever here is, is pretty fast to use so it's a pretty quick uh one to go from all the way from one to eight magnification okay not that i used it i was on 50 yard bay so i ran one x the whole time a couple times i like and this is just me shooting an optic instead of a red dot i'd come come around a barricade or something like that and not quite have the gun mounted quite properly and i'd see half of a reticle because my face wasn't on the gun and i'm used to like getting away with those shenanigans with my other rifle because it's got a red dot on it and if like if i can see the glass i can see the dot and i can you know start pounding on the targets but uh with a scope you need eye relief you need to have your your eye you know directly behind that thing otherwise you don't get a quite a clear picture so i think that was just an adjustment thing for me uh the red dot on this thing well kind of bright is not daytime bright like yeah you can see it there hmm. that's as bright that's as bright as it gets and that is uh that is not daytime bright oh it's so hard there you go it's cool i think like if you were to use this for hunting like if you were to take this uh hunting coyotes or something like that yeah that red dot would be nice It'd be nice to be able to see where your aiming is uh, we, we, in, 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 once getting into dusk, right? Um, in terms of like practicality to use during the daytime, not that great. And the other thing I didn't like about it was that the reticle is like it's got these two posts coming in from the side, but nothing coming in from the top and the bottom. Uh, and mm -hmm. instead, it's got like these just little hash marks for uh, different distances and windages. So like if the target's moving this much or if the wind's moving that much here, you hold it on this dot. I'm never going to use that shit. I just want like, give me the, give me the where like point to where the bullets are going to go. And the scope only has two of those. And I would, I would rather have more standard, like X marks the spot kind of a thing. So I can use it to my advantage for speed. Um, but other than that, like, it was, it was good. I, I would, I would use it if, uh, if I wasn't like on like a poverty budget, like when I first started three gun, Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I would have this would actually be an upgrade off the scope that I had when I was for I first started with like a Bushnell AR one to four. Oh um yeah, which is a lot more plain than this. Uh this one's got like four more magnification, twice as much, I guess. And uh it's just got more features. So I think that would have been better for than my initial starting scope. But now like I've you know uh got more money in my hobby and I've got uh, I've got nicer, nicer optics. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, match went well uh shot with uh yeah some really good shooters one of the guys uh shot really well and uh and but his his rifle failed him otherwise he he would have beat me he beat me on the first two stages and then his uh his wk started uh getting jams on him which that's still like i don't know that just happens with wks right it doesn't happen with a cz brand you just need to spend four grand and uh... there you go there you go for only <laughs> throw four... money for only four thousand dollars, you could have reliability. Well, the, cra the crappy thing is, he would have won if he had a reliable rifle. If he had a rifle that ran the whole match, he would have won. And I think that uh, that's a crappy way to win. That's a crappy way to lose too. Uh, when your gear fails you, and it's just, it's disappointing because that's like the second time that I've been at a three gun match just recently here, where it's like the bad rifles hold people back and it yeah. uh you, your scores at the end of the day aren't are kind of yours but also just kind of like a reflection of the state of the industry well you're having to work harder for like you know everything you do so you have to be like on the spot with your remedials <laughs> you have to be fast with fixing problems mm -hmm. uh but uh anyways yeah he's uh he, he shot uh really well 
Uh, that's actually uh, one of Kyle's buddies. So, um, and then after the match, he's like, "You want to do the team match in Peace River?" I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, let's do the team match in Peace River. So, nice. that's a that's a three gun match up uh, up way up north in northern Alberta. And uh, I'm signed up for well, I'm going to sign up for that now, I guess. And uh, got to think of a team name, something uh, proper offensive, and uh, yeah, go do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Normally they have like team names in there, you know, funny. So what was the what was the turnout for this match? How many shooters did you have? Twelve, something like that. Okay, twelve people. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, decently. Uh, I like it that size because it's uh, nice and quick. Um, I'm just confirming if it was twelve. I'm pretty sure it was 11, 11 people. Yeah, nice and quick, quick to get through. But uh, yeah, and you guys took turns ROing. How does how does that work? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With a level, like we have so many people there who've shot so often that uh, it's very easy to just like, oh, you just run the timer for me, and you know, yell at me and DQ me if I uh, if I break ninety. <laughs> okay. okay. All yeah, right. but uh, it's it's very like it's an informal like mini match almost. We were done by like yeah. two o'clock, so just that's amazing for three gun. Three gun is like it, it, again very involved in setup, tear down. Oh, for everything sure, else. I can imagine. So, yeah. Yeah. So our days typically. Um, when it's not like these small matches here, when it's a big match, it's it's five o'clock minimum, and sometimes yeah. even later. So, it's a it's a long day, but uh, no, this is nice and quick because it's, I'm sure because the, of the unpacking and repacking takes three times as long as uh, going on Ipsic match or a rimfire, you know. So yeah, jamming a whole pile of targets in a in a little sea can is uh, a little bit time consuming, and then just like arranging for trucks because you got to get a trailer and like go to the bay and like load stuff up like it takes time to do all that stuff whereas at Sherwood Park the um shack that they hold their targets in is on the bay so it makes it very easy to just directly hand bomb it all up there's a couple of like barrels that kind of thing that need a truck to drive them but not nearly as much stuff that needs like transportation it's all pretty much just stored right there on location so makes for a quick day makes for I a could. quick day good yeah so, it sounds we like had it hot was dogs mm mm love it uh oh yeah grilled right grilled yes grilled hot dogs good yeah Yeah. how is there another way boiled boiled yeah but oh i think it's gross but and you drink the water afterwards right uh yeah on a bad no you 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 make macaroni (laughs) out of the water (laughs) oh lovely lovely Mm, uh i ran my new uh Aegis Arrow glasses. This is my old set. My new set's in the bin or something like that. They're great. They're clearer yeah. than the, they're clearer than the four year old ones. Surprise, oh, surprise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, other than that, same, same, same. Uh, and then uh, just yesterday, I made some Carcano ammo. Um, I'm trying some powder. I have a whole bunch of Reloader 19, which is a bit slow for it, considering how short of a barrel it is. But I got so much of it, I'm just gonna like I'm gonna test it with that anyways. So. I got some test rounds. meet up with a buddy of mine, and we're gonna go test it. Um, maybe this weekend we'll go. Uh, we'll go try it out and see if we get any pressure signs, or if it likes that stuff, or if it mm. uh, makes a big fireball or whatever. It probably will because we're, <laughs> we're running slower powder than should be in there, and it's like a twenty-inch barrel. It's, it's not gonna burn oh, in there. Okay, they're little carbines, right? So, yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get some fireballs. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, Tony just has a couple questions about. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Uh, three gun heavy metal. Is there still a heavy metal division? Um, that I'm trying to click it, but maybe you're trying. Oh, to I was doing it time. too. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> That's why. That's why we're clicking at the same time and, and wondering right. why it's not working. Uh, Tony's wondering if there's a heavy metal division. Um, it depends on the club that you shoot at. So the the clubs run their own divisions. Their divisions kind of represent each other. They kind of, they're kind of similar, but uh, we tried getting heavy uh, heavy metal going like three years ago or so. And the, the best we could do is like three people at them, which I don't know, I guess like those three people can compete against each other. Um, and that was before, no, actually this is before COVID. This is going back even further because now uh, we have a division called Clipazine where oh, okay. it uses, it uses like the heavy metal, like one shot with the rifle is good enough. You don't need two on paper kind of a thing. Um, that was kind of holding us back, like making heavy metal a little bit more complicated to score before. But now that's just a, a regular occurrence for us. So 
Um, at, my, at my matches that I've, I've been to, people aren't really shooting heavy metal uh, as a division, but some people are using heavy metal guns, if that makes sense. Hmm. Like one of our, um, one of the guys uh, at Chaz runs an M1 Garand and a 45 pistol and a pump shotgun. Uh, and that's like the, the setup for heavy metal. Uh, what's the race gun for heavy metal? I don't think, well, an SG542, maybe the one in 308. That would, uh, that would be okay. decent. Okay. The M1 Garand is pretty good because the M1 Garand is, uh, uh, you know, eight rounds. So it's a little bit more. Uh, they're generally pretty reliable. Um, a little bit hard to get like to jam stuff in there, but, uh, M1 Garands seem to be used a lot in Clipazine, and they might be run in heavy metal. Like before in heavy metal, you'd run an AR-10, a Stag Stag Arms 308, and you'd be good to go. There's your gamer rifle. Done. I don't really have a good answer for uh, for right now. And then there's uh, uh, there's Colin like oh. jumping in here. I'll make sure my Kodiak's running good, or buy a new rifle. <laughs> I'm sure the Kodiak will run fine, and if not, we'll have another rifle just in yeah. case. Yeah. Um, and then Tony adds, I would want to race an RFB KSG and an M45 A1, but five round mags on the RFB. Yeah, that's that's a problem because those five round mags are huge. What are you what are you gonna use to carry them, right? You're gonna have to get a chest rig that that has pouches that big, or maybe you can get something on your belt, but ugh, that's that's hard. Like you're probably gonna have like 10 to 15 rifle targets on a stage, so you're gonna need uh mag in the gun and at least three or four somewhere on you that's a lot like myself that's why i run these things right i pop two of these on my belt there's uh you know 10 20 30 40 rounds on my belt plus that one in the gun gets me to 60 rounds total so i'm good for like 30 targets if i need to i never need to but just in case sometimes you do um what other guns would be good for the K the ksg uh, if you ever have to start dry, you're screwed. Or if you ever have to start uh, with only five in the right. gun, you're screwed because they are so slow to load. Yeah. So yeah. like so unbelievably slow. Um, you're never going to be able to keep that thing fed. So it'll work some of the time. It'll work great. And then some of the time you're going to get hooped. And I can't remember if the KSG has, I'm pretty sure the KSG has chokes, but chokes are like absolutely mandatory because you have to like knock down steel targets. You have to, you have to be able to put like lead on target and uh, you can't do that with a cylinder bore shotgun. So guys bring like tactical, like combat shotguns and then they shoot seven and seven and a half inch shot out of it. And they're just like giving little tickles to the plate. Just come on, knock it over. And they don't, uh -huh. it doesn't knock the plates over. It doesn't kill the plates on the Texas star, but uh, your M45 would be dope. That's uh, that's exactly what uh, hmm. would be cool to run. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, all three gun talk all the time here in the morning. <laughs> How yeah, about you, exactly. Mo? Uh, well, I'll I'll transition to uh, all Ipsic talk. Uh, last weekend was a full weekend of Ipsic. So, uh, the Eastern Ontario Shooting Club, which is near Ottawa, hosted a level three match, Ipsic match. And for this, like for Eastern Ontario, this part of the world, we don't get many level threes. So it was kind of a, a special thing because uh, most of the level threes in Ontario are, are closer to Southern Ontario, Southwestern Ontario, Waterloo, uh, Peterborough. And uh, so, so that started last Wednesday. I was there on Saturday. That's when I was shooting. Uh, it started off with uh, like rain and a little bit of rain and stuff, but then it kind of tapered off and, and most of the day was uh, just overcast, which was perfect. Like for me, mm. the, 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 like the seeing the targets, not having the sun beating down on my head, it was just like perfect shooting weather to do a match. And I could tell you, like it was 14 stages. And at the end, at the end, I wasn't the previous level threes I did by you know the last three or four stages i was starting to labor and like feel it and stuff and this i was still feeling good i could have probably shot a bunch more stages and i and i would have been i would have been fine uh the match ran like a swiss watch because that's a good thing um they did uh we did not have to patch or or reset 
each. So there were five ranges. Uh, each had three stages. Uh, one had two, and then there was a separate chrono uh, stage. And at each stage, they had extra ROs and they had extra staff. So pretty much, yeah, double the, the usual ROs and one or two people that were there just to, to reset the steel and paint. And it was awesome because we just got to concentrate on shooting, right? But it was also odd because every time, you know, you weren't shooting, you're almost like, okay, so I'm supposed to be doing something right now and I'm not. So, but, but in terms of how smooth it went, you know, how like when people are, uh, the shooters are patching stages and stuff, people are, some are standing mm -hmm. around the same target or is this just this cluster and things don't go that smooth, I'll and, patch the uh, the hanging steel. I'll, I'll yeah. patch the uh, the spinner. <laughs> so the way they did it is they pretty much had uh, somebody with a, a patch gun on the left left side of the stage, one on the right side, and as they, they were splitting the scoring, and the 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 reset from one shooter to the next was like moving so quickly, and not but not in a sense that the shooter was rushed or anything. It's just it was just turning over so so quickly. And, uh, and th there wasn't a lot of like questionable stuff, you know, it's it uh, like questioning the scoring, or whatever, like things were just, mm -hmm. you know, done top notch. And uh, from what I saw, I mean, I shot, I, I was, I worked on Sunday, but I'll, I'll get to that point, but everything I saw, it ran like really well. Another unique, maybe not unique. I think they might do this for level fours and higher, but, uh, for every stage, there was like a yellow caution area. So you couldn't unless uh, only during the four minute um, uh, walkthrough and then one minute for the last, for the first shooter, you, you had to stand behind until he was your, you were on deck. You had to stand behind the, the yellow tape. So they were keeping the shooters back of, so, you know, people weren't getting in the way at this. So that was another aspect, hmm. right? So you had your, you had your four minutes to plan your stage and then that's it. And then even pre-match people weren't allowed to walk the stages either. Like everything was like, uh, everybody was kept back. So, and I, and I actually liked it that way. And I thought it, things went really smooth because of it. So there was that. And um, for me, I started off with my usual uh, one mic per, about one mic per stage and I was getting frustrated. And then, you know, and talking to, to the guys that I was shooting with, I was in a really good squad, a couple of my friends, Mardig and, and Louis that I, I've shot but with before Louis I shoot with almost every match. Um, but we're I was just talking about like, you know, the being patient on that second shot and stuff. And and then I'm happy to say, and me being positive for once, I the, my last five stages, I didn't have a single mic. So I finished the day. So instead of getting more frustrated and tired or whatever, I finished the day strong. Now you're gonna ask me, how did I do? And I probably was a little bit worse than middle of the pack, but in fairness, like being a level three, the the uh, the caliber of the shooters is higher than your your local one or two match, right? Mm -hmm. So I was happy with how I was really happy with how I did, and the gun ran the my ten folio ran flawlessly. Um, I had seen the I had seen the matchbook, and there was there were a couple of stages where we started unloaded, either holstered unloaded or 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 gun on uh gun pickup right mm -hmm. and uh, so i had pr i had practiced a bunch of all week i had practiced a bunch of that so i have one of those um i think they're daa it's like this purple uh, weighted mag and uh and it's good for like obviously actually you know the action of chambering and stuff right so i was doing a lot of pickup with that and, and practicing and and i have to say that during the match it it was very smooth so and and all match I was pretty smooth. I did a lot of practice with the uh, with uh, mag changes and draws and stuff, and all that was good. So, um, so yeah. And then one anything else from the actual shooting day? I had written down a bunch of notes. Uh, yeah, so I was happy overall how it went, and then uh, how smooth all the stages were, and and everything. And then on Sunday I went back. Uh, I just volunteered to, to help work the stage. So I ended up being at one of the ranges, the one with only two, two stages because the chronos, chrono was next door. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I worked, uh, we had five squads, pretty much of nine or 10 shooters go through. 
So I got to see like, you know, everybody that day shoot those uh, two stages. One was a shorter one. It was, uh, it was uh, four targets and it was um, uh, three rounds per instead of the usual two. So it's always interesting to see how people react to that. Right. Cause you know, like we're all used to, you know, if you do IPSEC, you're used to that, you know, two, two on paper kind of uh, rhythm, right. Or routine and seeing how people react to that, that having to put a third shot. And it was, and it was a, it was a, uh, it's a short stage, obviously 12 rounds. And some of the open shooters, just like the really good ones, guys saw some really good ones. Mm -hmm. And just to see how they quickly, they get off 12 rounds <laughs> going from one side to the next. It's just like impressive. It was one, it was definitely a stage for, for the open guys to, to have huge hit factors on, right? We're talking like 11 and 11 and 12. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was a couple guys. Well, one guy I'll talk about, um, Mm -hmm. So one of the guys that got to sh see shoot, uh, Giancarlo, who's from Ontario, he'll mm -hmm. be on in a couple of weeks. Uh, he'll be one of our, he'll be our guests in a couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So he's going to come on after the Nationals because the, the Ipsic Nationals are next week. Next week, going into the weekend in uh, Selkirk, Manitoba, I think, I believe. Uh, so yeah, so he'll be on after that to talk about it. He ended up winning this match. And he's really good because out of there's been three level threes in Ontario so far, there's two to come and he's finished first, second and first overall. So like he's, he's a beast. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so I got to see him shoot. And I got to see some other really good shooters too. I mean, everybody with that day was, was, was good. You, there weren't too many like, um, you know, newer guys. And uh so yeah, and again, it was another day that everything everything went uh, smoothly, um, and it was just yeah, fun. It was really fun to watch. I enjoyed it, and uh, it was a bit. It was sunnier. It wasn't overcast that day. There was really no rain, but uh, it wasn't too hot either. So I guess another another good day of uh, shooting. I think earlier in the week they, when they were shooting Wednesday and Thursday, there was a there was a lot of rain and they had to like pump out some of the water from some of the, oh. some of the ranges. Cause it was getting uh, uh swampy, I guess. <laughs> right. So no fun running around with a pistol when you're like going through uh <laughs> water. Um, and uh, what I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Um, no, I guess Sounds that's a good time. Yeah. Oh, it was it was fabulous. Like, uh, like it was probably my favorite weekend or favorite match for Ipsic so far, and the what two and a half, almost three years that I've been doing it. Uh, partly because it went smooth, and partly because I was really happy. Like, I think I did my best for a level three. This was the best I've done, and a part of it again was when I mentioned that like I wasn't laboring in the last three stages. I was still like. Uh, going through my um, stage plans and I was focused and all that, and, but you know, other other times I was just like, okay, let's just get this, let's just get this done, kind of a thing, right? And uh, and I liked that uh, there were a couple of more challenging stages, and and in the four minutes I came up with a plan and I was happy with 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 how I did, and uh, that's it. There was one stage, and it happened to be on the one that I worked on on Sunday where they had four small poppers at, I want to say maybe 15 yards away. And they were packed in tight with a no shoot in front of them. So the two on the outside, you could, you could hit pretty safely, but those inside ones I saw probably from when I shot and the, when I watched the, those five squads, mm -hmm. I probably saw half the shooters hit the no shoot, the penalty, mm. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and it wasn't like it was all like there were a lot of really good shooters that ended up hitting it because they were just going a little too fast for you know uh engaging some tight poppers you know amongst a no shoot so so yeah it was interesting to see how they and then again how they would react to it right you know that they've hit it and they're like you had that sunken the sunken feeling and then you got you still got to move out because it was at like at the beginning of the stage and then you had to keep going right so um I guess that's it. That's it for me. So yeah, really fun weekend. Um, I guess Perfect. it's just a, just the two of us and nobody else to go. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Going we'll to, on uh, to upcoming events. Yeah, oh, you're running this. You're running yeah. this show. What am I doing? Hey, hey man. 
you stay know, off. Every, every once in a while, I just grab the steering wheel. <laughs> I was going to say stay off my lawn. This is more like stay off my range. Yeah. Stop backseat driving. Yeah, or that Backseat too. hosting. Backseat hosting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got out the top, join a maple seed. We, there's still some events to come, right? And uh, yes. Yeah, uh, availability depends on like where in the country you are. Like I noticed um, on Reddit, someone was like, hey, where do I learn about rifle marksmanship? Like, how do I get good at this? And someone's like, maple seed. He's like, oh, but I need one in Southwest Ontario. And I think the answer to that is uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. It, I think it's a range shortage, right? There's not a lot of ranges down there. So a lot of the events end up being closer to Ottawa because there's just more ranges that have more space. Space. Yeah, there's ranges. They just, it's just this. They're busy, right? Like, yeah, they're busy, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And then um, we have the. I can do that. Yeah, oh. I, got, I got the details up in front of me here because I have okay, the link. For it. Uh, BTSA is running an Annie Oakley day on August 12th. That's this weekend, next weekend, next weekend, right? Next weekend. Next week. Uh, it's a women's day. It's a women's only introduction to shooting. Uh, starts at 930. Open to women 14 years and older who have no or very little shooting prior experience. Uh, if you're wondering what shoot, what the draw shooting is, come on out and they will go through everything. There's a clinic. They have an exciting day of shooting introduction to shooting from how do I get a firearm to say safety aspects of shooting, getting up to the firing line to shoot firearm spanning from 22, nine millimeter and two, two, three and up. So that's uh, that's going to be at the BTSA range, which is uh, just West of Calgary there, August 12th. Okay. And then we have uh, three, a three gun match at MP three G. Saturday. That's August. mighty. Yeah, mighty piece. That one's going to be mighty, it. okay. Yep. Yeah. At August nineteenth. Uh, okay. And then uh, that's all the same match, right? Yeah. That's PCFGA. already on FGA. Yeah, it's that's... already on practice score, obviously. So no, no, not no. that one. No. Oh. Uh, they don't do that here. We don't okay. do that here. <laughs> no practice score. Paper, paper, and a pen. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. Old that's school. the. I don't, I don't actually know which one. PCFGA. This must be Peace River. Uh, I don't actually know. Somewhere somewhere up in the north. People who... People, I, you don't... Like, unless I talked about uh, these ranges, like, uh, SPFGA wouldn't mean anything to you. But that means no. everything to us back here, right? So, yeah, that's that'll be Peace River. Kyle confirms it. It's Peace River. There's still Kyle, our, uh, on in the field correspondent, says Peace River is still the Stone Age. Nice. It's not the stone, maybe Victorian because they have pens, right? Oh, okay. Quills, yeah. quills, uh, ballpoint pen, probably, <laughs> but uh, maybe, maybe. All right, cummerbunds, um, they don't they don't have any like you have to if you have to pirate reload, fire a pistol, drop it, pull another one out, fire it, drop it, pull another one out. <laughs> nice. No, no, um, are there any ORA events left? I wish Dan I was on to tell us. We're gonna no. say we're gonna say that there is. They're okay. on practice. Go score. on practice score and look up mm -hmm. ORA. There. Oh, what? you know what there is? There's a bunch of CRPS right. events that are still coming up. There's one yes. in yes. Oh, the one just passed in Sherwood Park here, but they're doing those all over the place as well. Hold on, I can tell you. There's uh what's the date today? Today is uh, okay, so there's second? uh August second. There's the western uh region two day at Sherwood Park. Is that this weekend or is that That's, the weekend? Yeah, that the fifth. Passed? So the fifth. So yes, this ah, weekend. Coming up. Coming up. Okay. And then uh, in a couple and another week, there's one in Stittsville. Mm -hmm. And um, then after that, on the nineteenth, is in Victoria. So yes, there are some uh, CRPS matches coming up. Neat. Neat. And then we'll move on to the news. So we had an interesting story. Murder charge dropped in case of Milton, Ontario, man accused of killing armed intruders. So I know there was a lot of us in the community uh, following this story to see how it would play, it would play out, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they had leveled a second degree murder charge against this guy for shooting someone who was... Uh, in the, doing an armed invasion in their house yeah, and the armed person invasion. Shot had a gun yes. and they're like nope murder <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, better get a lawyer yeah it's ridiculous but and I then that's guilty with the presumption of innocence no that's just they just assume that you're guilty yeah 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 
and it's up to you to prove your innocence. It's not the other way around. Canada's different. Canada's, you know, we strive to make ourselves as different from the U.S. as possible. Yeah. yeah. You're guilty by default here. You'll have to get a lawyer to prove that you're not. Lay down and take it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that was a good news story, right? Yes? Yes. Not that it got to that point, but that it, he didn't have to go through trial and all that. So, well, you know, you never know when, uh, when one of these cases is going to destroy our rights for self defense, right? And, and they have the potential for that. One of these might come up where it's like, oh, actually, you have to have one arm tied behind your back now if you want to use a gun to defend. Like, it's, yeah. it'll always be some nonsense, right? And, uh, what was the other guy that that uh, third times a charm got uh, got nailed? Peter Cahill, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Same with that one, right? Oh well, you went out with a shotgun. You were looking for trouble, therefore you get charged, regardless what the the rest of the situation is. Unbelievable. Yeah. So these any of these cases has a potential to uh, to screw things up for us. And then. Um... We gonna talk about the Tr- Trudeau cabinet shuffle, <laughs> but there was also a news story today, right? Just to distract people, you know. But anyways, I don't think you can. I don't think you can distract from you know our our PMs uh, going through some marital marital woes, and the last PM to do this while being a sitting PM was his dad. It was his dad? I think it's just the two of them, correct? <laughs> yeah, I'm like father, Pretty like sure son. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So, um, does this mean that Sophie takes half of Canada? Yeah, I think so. Hopefully. Take the east? Oh, <laughs> the East. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Does that leave Justin with the West? I don't know if I really, yeah. he probably wouldn't like that. He probably wouldn't like that. No. But, uh, do we want to be run by a drama teacher or a yoga instructor? Hmm. Yoga instructor, please. Yoga instructor. Yeah. Well, let's go with yeah. that. Yeah, they at least they're you know they're going to be more balanced. Like the budget was balanced, marriage balance, wasn't. Yeah, they balance itself. She will balance herself. Marriage will balance itself. Uh, <laughs> I can keep going with these horrible jokes. They're not mine, yeah. by the way. I I steal from the internet. I steal all these goods. Um, I didn't like. I don't subscribe to the Toronto Star, and, and everybody, well, not every, most people know it's a pretty left. It's a propaganda newspaper for the uh, Liberal Party. And mm-hmm. there was some headline that almost like it's uh, trying to make him a sympathetic figure. Like, you know, it was almost like politics is what broke his marriage. And like, we should feel bad. I'm like, wow, that they just have no shame. Absolutely yeah, no I shame. Think, I don't think that's what it was. I mean, you <laughs> could make the case that it was because it's a sad thing. But a lot of people were saying like, oh, I feel bad for his kids. It's like, I don't. His kids are going to have like a silver spoon and they're going to have yeah, like, like every advantage. There's really like, why even bother saying that? Every advantage like he had. So, yeah. 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 So shit happens. Yeah. And, shit uh, happens. Uh, on the positive note to that, very sad news for the Prime Minister. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe it'll help him get kicked out because maybe he'll, uh, I don't know, have a nervous breakdown and not be able to, you know, do his job properly and get kicked out. That would be amazing. Why, why was he doing his job properly up to this point? No, Well, I mean, it depends on your different definition. He was keeping elected, stayed in office for a very long time. So too long. Yeah. Too long. Too long. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I guess that's it for the news. Uh, shall we do the giveaway draw now? Oh, yeah. Let me grab it one second. Oh, no, I can't. We're on your streaming on YouTube. Just trust yeah. me. There's an AR-180B lower just on my shelf over there. You okay. can't see it. So, so everyone who made a donation of $20 or more to the CCFR or tagged themselves on Instagram with uh, with a firearm, was entered into the draw, which closed yesterday. Mm-hmm. And uh, to the randomizer. Do-do-do-do. Should I share my screen with all the people just to make it look like super legit? I think we yeah. should. I yeah. took, okay, I took all the last names out. Uh, oh, no, that one still has it. One second. I'm just going to take all the last names out and put like an initial. If you have like a username, I left it in there because can't be bothered. Let's grab, okay. Okay, you see the screen, right? These are all the people's donations, Instagrams, that kind of thing. We have 39, 39 total entries. So let's go to the randomizer. 39 to one. I'm going to hit the button. Ready? 
30. 30. Okay, go back. And number 30 is Richard Lee. Richard, there you go. If you're Congrats. watching. Congratulations, Richard. Yeah, you will need to email in your pal and info to me so I can do that transfer. Uh, boop. There, bolded. That's how I can tell that that's the person that won. Congrats. Awesome. And uh, thank you all for the for making the donations and sending in the pics. And uh, it's awesome. And supporting yeah. the show. Helping us make a cool giveaway. I like it. Yeah. Uh, we will get into new gun stuff. Brought to you by Bullseye North. Need a new boomstick? Bullseye North is Canada's shooting superstar and a proud supporter of the CCFR. With a wide selection of guns and top trending gear for any shooter. Free shipping over $200. Some exclusion supply like ammo. Subscribe to the weekly newsletter to get first access to the hottest deals. I guess I just need to share my screen again, don't I? I should have just kept sharing. Could have, yeah. Bullseye's got them Glock mags on sale again. Uh -huh. Aha. The key mags. $17.99. That's cheap. They nice. got 109 of them. They got lots. Lots of mags. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, check those out. Uh, Delask has uh, some special Duria TM-22 Gen 2 rifles. They've been upgraded by Delask. They have a shorter barrel okay. and an extended charging handle. So the barrel is very, very short. And, what's the uh, length? What's the length? Ten inch, ten oh, inch cool. barrel. Okay. Yeah, so okay. very nice and handy. And uh, it comes with the original eighteen inch barrel. If you feel like I don't know, just putting it on for no reason. It's non restricted, so, even with that ten inch barrel. Nice. So you got two barrels. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Extended charging handle. Test fired. Comes with a linear compensator, which looks pretty dope. Look at that thing. Just dope. Yeah. Out fast. Yeah. Yeah. That's the technical term for, for how I think works. so. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait. Sorry. I've been corrected. Uh, bees knees is, uh, is oh. the term they used. Yeah. Sorry. My lingo is off. Um, it was an outdated term that I used. I will feel shame. But, uh, anyways, yeah, bees knees is very current. Like all the kids are, <laughs> all the kids are going around saying, all those jeans are the bees knees. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. That song, that riff. Yeah, that, that uh, the piece, piece. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, that's at Delask. They're eight ninety nine. Next up, uh, Rangeview Sports has a precision ammo sale, so they're yes. selling out some of their fancier ammo. So if you're looking for SMB three hundred eight precision, it's thirty four bucks a box. Not bad. And uh, for the PR, PRS Rimfire guys, the Elite Contact and the SK Standard Plus. I use the Standard Plus too. So that's um, what I use. those are some good uh, prices there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Standard Plus is 940 per 50 round box. Yeah. And Ely Contact is 10 bucks for a 50 round box. Very nice. They've got gold. Ooh. Oh, that's the 223. That's why. Federal gold. Well, it's still a good price. Federal gold medal match. Uh, 223 Remington. 73 grain burger OTM bullets. 32 oh, no. bucks a box. That is very decent. Nice. Next up here, uh, Calgary Shooting Center has the Volkortsen VT2 takedown. Uh, it's a takedown 22 made by Volkortsen, and oh, the link does not work at all. Where, where that was supposed to go? Where does this one go? It's available with six and 12 inch handguards. So if you prefer like a shorter one or a longer one, they've got both of those. It's not cheap. It's a Volkortsen. It's not going to be. Yeah, it's not going to be yet. cheap. <laughs> 2750 is not cheap. Um, no. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty expensive, twenty two, but it's full quartzen and it will take down. So, anyways, Calgary Shooting Center has those. Uh, okay, someone was just pointing this out on the Discord. Um, this uh, uh, SFRC has uh, a sale on eighteen percent off. Use code Civic. It can be used on a lot of stuff, and eighteen percent is a big amount of it sure discount. is it sure yeah, is. yeah yeah so like there's you can actually take down like oh five oh did it work for ammo does it work for ammo no uber t tico can can so i can use this with ammo and the cart what's that going to take me to this is like 10 cents around right now at coupon. coupon what was civic? it civic? civic all caps or maybe I not it doesn't it probably doesn't need it 450 look at that 
for five thousand two hundred and fifty. That's decent. That gets it way. Is that nine cents? Eight cents around? Yeah, that is. That is that is a hell of a sale. Getting excited. Just a second. Let's see here. Four hundred fifty divided by five two five zero. Eight and a half cents. There you go. For twenty two. Damn. Adriel, Adriel is now live buying ammo. No, I'm not. Well, I want to show you one more here. This was on Discord. And uh, okay, Caltech RDB, 1500 bucks, Ooh. right? What happens after you put 18% off that bad boy? Well, let's proceed to check out and find out, right? Uh, let's remove that guy there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Look at that. A Caltech RDB for 12 For under 1300 Nice. Woo! Nice. nice. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. now we're talking mm -hmm. yeah they don't have a sub 2000 do they oh, let's find out. to the search uh, uh maybe sub did you put sup <laughs> no i didn't put sup <laughs> sup subs sfrc uh no no i guess I, let me check keltec keltec Kel hyphen no hyphen <laughs> Uh, RDB. Oh, that's a sticker draw. Sticker draw. KSG. Oh, oh, that's the SU twenty two. I thought that was going to be the SU sixteen. Uh huh. Okay. SP. What and God? Oh, that's the all loaded on Sunday and shoot it. The that rest of the week shotgun they've got the SGP twelve gauge. <laughs> with all the shells 30 oh. inch barrel i think it holds it says magazine capacity 12 that doesn't seem right but uh maybe that's per magazine or maybe it just has one tube i don't know okay. no 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 sub 2000 that would be amazing okay. though, yeah right? that would yeah 18%. that would percent mm -hmm. mm -hmm. let's say off of eight or 900 well i think they're good for that <sighs> yeah yeah I better remove that. Just okay. someone, someone, <laughs> someone on the Discord was looking at it, and I don't want to. I don't want to be holding it. Anyways, SFRC has eighteen percent off, and they have decent prices on everything else. They didn't like increase prices, so it's uh, good stuff. Yeah, yeah watch for those. Uh, North Silva's bringing in some barrels for shadows. So if you're looking for SPO one shadow or, or shadow two, uh, those will be available at Tenda Tesro Soli Outdoors Italian Sporting Goods and Reliable Gun. Mm -mm. Oh, I wanted to show this ridiculousness. Do they have anything else that's similar to it? What was this called? What is uh, that? Just a second. Outdoor camping alarm. That's what they called it. Outdoor camping alarm. Oh, they still have more. Uh, okay. It's an outdoor. Uh, come on. No, I want to see the stupid product. Where is it? Right there. Ah, there we go. What does that look like to you? Do you notice what's what's going on down here? That's a shotgun shell. What the? <laughs> uh, so it's a uh, uh, it's got a firing pin. It's got a spring retainer that you put on a trip line uh, to scare away bears and stuff. Right? Let's see the front there. That's the the face for the shotgun shell to go into it. It's an animal warning device. <laughs> Using a shotgun shell. Wow. Uh-huh. It's not a, a trip line that will, you know, cut the legs off someone who's uh, who's uh, uh, walking on your property. It's for bears to scare them away. Okay, then. <laughs> Anyways, I haven't seen anything like this. This show very, is for uh, entertainment purposes only. We very, are not recommending uh, the purchase of this product. No. No. Very inventive, though very inventive yeah i like they, they existed before you could like make those but it wasn't something that you could just like buy off the shelf and just being like oh i guess i'm gonna you know put a couple of these out uh oh i had i didn't put it in the 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 list and it's not something new it's more of a restock item mm -hmm. uh so ibi has the deuce ult ultimatum oh, action nice. action uh, back in stock, I think it's like fifteen hundred. So it's it's very um, competitive against against the Voodoo and the Remax, right? And mm -hmm. um, so they have them on their their on their website and they're available. So someone who's looking to upgrade to a custom action 
in the 22 Rimfire world or just wants to jump in and go right to that, uh, they are available and they haven't been available for many months. So that's it. Just because they bought them, right? They bought them and then they started making yeah. them in-house. Yes. 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 So, yeah. So definitely uh, there won't be, I don't think there's many of them. So definitely if you're looking for that or have been looking for that, jump in. Okay, we don't have a main topic for tonight, but we did do the draw, so we'll move along. Uh, we have a letter from Tony. I'll just I'll just read it. Uh, Greetings, Slamfire crew. Short essay for today. I would like to give a shout out to Bullseye Norse. I, I promise this is not the sponsor spot. They made a genuine mistake on my order and only shipped out half of, of the items on the order, as the order was changed once pro, once before payment mm. but they provided great service and corrected the issue right away after receiving my email within 12 hours of me sending the email which was 10 p.m mountain time definitely will shop there again great prices great service free shipping available and they support slam fire radio and the ccfr uh since we're on the shout outs uh well not yet but we can we can do this now i will give you i give a shout out to dr terry bryant she visited us at BTSA at the Steel Challenge Nationals two weeks back. Oh, cool. Uh, it's great to see her in person and reassuring to know our, our Alberta CFO understands and is part of the legal firearms community. Thanks and good night. Did she try doing Steel Challenge with the Nambu? <laughs> she's uh, a Nambu. She's got a pile of yeah. Nambus. Yeah, she used to and still does go to the gun shows with like a pile of like weird, very weird looking Japanese pistols. That'd be fun though, right? Trying to do a steel challenge with a Nambu. <laughs> Would yeah. it run? Would it run? That'd be the question, right? I, I remember when she was a guest, she was fantastic. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. definitely one of us. <laughs> and smart. Yeah. 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 Well, well, smarter than us, but one, one of us in terms That's of That's not saying much. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not a high bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um do we and Kyle usually does the YouTube stuff? Did we get? I didn't really. Oh, I'll do uh, it. Filling in will be Adriel. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Eddie was saying the crew review on TFB TV wasn't flattering. Hop didn't seem impressed with all the jams. No, nope, sure didn't. Uh, True Sorensen says uh, this was on the look on the Bren two. I think I would want one if it had the rifle length, gas, and handguard. Just don't like the short one with the non restricted barrel. But for the price point, I might just consider a BNT. So um, go take a look at my match video with that thing and my thoughts on it. And I did, I think I posted some shooting footage to Instagram. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they did with the barrel gas port, but it's soft. It's super soft shooting. I was expecting it to like rocket the brass out because that bullet's going down the barrel. As soon as that gas starts getting tapped off, it's got like another, what, 10 inches of, uh, of, of barrel for that bullet to still go and all that pressure is going to the back. But it didn't, uh, it didn't launch the empties far at all. It, it moved them like a meter, maybe two. So I take back uh, my shit talking of the long barrel and short gas system. It seemed to run fine. It ran great. So don't let that hold you back. The, the handguard's still short. Like it's still a very short handguard. Uh, there mm -hmm. is Marstar has some handguards coming in from HBI. They're like 450, so they're not cheap but they're longer handguards that you can use with that rifle. So if you don't like it, throw money at the problem and it'll go away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tony mentions, uh, Mike, never heard of him. My best friend is called Alpha. Charlie is a decent guy. I don't talk to Delta <laughs> much. My nemesis's name is No Shoot. Ah, <laughs> uh, No Shoot, yeah. Uh, Tony is also mentioning on 517, as a non-restricted PAL holder, I should just say registration certificate. What's that? Never heard of it. <laughs> well, back in the day, we had those too, even for even for our rifles and shotguns. Oh my God, what a mess. All those numbers. People would carve their registration number for their gun <laughs> into their gun. Terrible. Dark yeah. days. Dark days. Dark days. And uh, that is it for comments on YouTube. Okay, and uh, I don't think we have any. We've been covering all the messages as they've been coming in. Must have been um, on player, and I haven't noticed it. Nope, nothing on player. Okay, and uh, if you go to our website 
um, slamfireradio.com. You'll find a Cabela's link. If you use the link to make a purchase, you'll be supporting the show. And then once a month, we do uh, read out the purchases and talk about it, good or bad, I guess. Um, well, I guess maybe I didn't. I didn't grab those for last month. I'll go. Yeah, I'll so we'll do it. Time. We'll do it next week. We'll do it next yeah. week. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you could do that through Patreon and Player. We'd appreciate that. If you'd like to email email the show and we'll read your uh, email live, you could do so at slamfireradio at gmail.com. And then uh, we are on the shoutouts portion. So go ahead, Adriel. I'll give a shout out to Mark for bringing the hot dogs to Sherwood Park. I don't know about you, but I love eating at the range like mass cooked food hot dogs hamburgers because mm. mm. when i bring like my lunch will be sandwiches from the night before which aren't the best or uh mcdonald's like a breakfast sandwich like i'll get two mm-hmm. of them in the morning i'll eat one for breakfast and i'll have one for lunch which also isn't very good uh or like noodles or something like that so when i get like a hot dog or hamburger freshly cooked at a at a, at a stage or like right in the middle of the day mm. Hits the spot, hits the spot. So big, uh, big ups for that. And then the Hodges for ROing. Yeah, that uh, made things very easy for me on day of ROing and admitting. Just doing all the things really. Nice. That's it. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was uh, everyone involved with the uh, the match on the weekend. Match director Meta, the stats officer Alex. Uh, the chief RO, I guess, was Richard. I don't want to miss anybody. The people that I worked with on Sunday, Felix, Kib, Mike, and Bill. I'm trying to do this from memory. And everybody that I shot with in my squad. And uh, it was just fantastic. So it was one of those special weekends in the shooting world. And uh, that's that. And we'll get to our wrap-up. Um Join our Discord server. Watch us, uh, watch us on Facebook, YouTube, and Play Europe. Join the CCFR. Very, very important. And see you all next week. Good night. Kelly, Kyle, Dave. So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over It's time to get a gun